This is the plaintiff, Robin Gass. She says she brought her BMW to the defendant's repair shop, and instead of using authentic BMW parts, he snuck after market parts on her car. And now she has problems. She needed to have it repaired correctly. The defendant refuses to do the work on his dime with real BMW parts, so she's suing him for $1,043, the cost of the repair. This is the defendant, William Ramirez. He says he tried to help this woman out because she purchased the car from him. But you know what they say, nice guys finish last. He did everything he could to please this woman. She's suing him nine months after he repaired the car, and he's not giving her a refund. He's accused of being a shoddy mechanic. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says that the defendant used aftermarket parts on her BMW rather than authentic BMW parts, and now her car doesn't run right. But the defendant claims he did everything in his power to please this lady and can't. So now it's the judge's job. It's the case of a Beamer bummer. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right. Ms. Guess, you are suing our next car incorporated representative here by William Ramirez. You're the owner, correct, Mr. Ramirez? That's correct. And he was your car broker when you got this car. You're suing him for a mechanical repair that didn't last. All right, I'm getting all kinds of confused. So you explain to me what happened here, Ms. Guess. I uh, brought my car to our next car to get a valve cover fixed. Well, um, why did you do I that? He's a broker. He, he's a car broker. He's not a mechanic. No, he actually has a repair shop on the premises of the facility. And okay. I've routinely seen his mechanics work on cars that okay. he then sells. So, right. And he did that with the car I bought. So I had, it was reasonable for me to think that he could do this uh, for the car that he had actually sold me. Okay. Okay. So I took it to him for the repair. He charged me $1,043. Now, this is during, obviously, the pandemic. So when I got the car repaired, I wasn't driving it much. But when I actually put enough miles on it, I found that the valve cover was still leaking oil and smoking. So I returned to uh, our next car and Will and said, Will, the problem isn't fixed. He said, OK, bring it in. I did bring it in. How far are I they from you? Quite a ways, 35 miles. Um, but my usual mechanic was having problems at the time because of the pandemic, and he was understaffed and couldn't get it done reasonably. Anyway, okay. it worked out that Will could get it done. So I took it to him. Subsequently, I found out that the work was not done adequately, and I still had the problem. I went back to Will because How I How much to subsequently? My Oh, let's see. I did the work in September. I think I first contacted him that the problem was not fixed in February or March. Okay. Um, I brought it in. Um, and the day that I brought it in, he was like, he didn't have time to fix it or it was a problem. So I returned to Santa Monica and said, okay, give me a day when I can bring it in and we can get this done. Uh, that didn't happen to my satisfaction and in a timely fashion. So I went to my uh, my Santa Monica mechanic and they said, well, listen, this part will still be under warranty. You're not a year out. BMW will guarantee it. It may be just a limit. We can go ahead, get the receipt from our next car. We will submit this to BMW. They'll give us a new valve cover. We'll put it in and you'll be on your way. I asked Will, will I need the receipt for the valve cover that you guys put in my car in September so that we can go back and get have the manufacturer warranty it? He refused to do it. And I was like, why would you refuse to do it? This costs you nothing. He was he just refused to do it. That's when I suspected that he either didn't do the work uh, or that fraudulently put some aftermarket or something else in my car. Why would putting an aftermarket be fraudulent? Because they don't work in the BMW. BMW highly recommends you use their parts because the other ones don't work. And the one that was in there was an aftermarket one, and that's why it was leaking. Okay. When you so asked him to do the repair, BMW. did you actually ask him to use a BMW one? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And they made it very clear. Why didn't you have any paperwork? Paperwork. Like from him. Why didn't you have the, do you have something from him that says the work that was done? I do not. And I did not realize until I complained to the regulatory agency in California, the Bureau of Automotive Repair, that what he did was illegal. Repair shops do have to issue a itemized receipt of what parts they bought, the labor that they charge. I just trusted him because he sold me the car and I liked the car. I had no idea. I just did not. Let me hear from you, Mr. Ramirez. She wants her money back because she had to six months later, she had to pay eighteen hundred dollars to fix the same problem. And according to her, she told you she wanted a BMW part and you sold that to her. And then it turns out it's not a BMW part. It was an aftermarket part. Let me hear your your version on this. Well, Robin came into the office Well, she called us and she said, Hey, well, I'm having a problem with my buggy because that's what she calls it. She says, I need a couple of things done to it. I need brakes done, my rear bumper. I keep on hitting the back of the car, so I need that fixed. And it's leaking oil. My mechanic says the car is leaking oil. So I said, sure, you know, we can help you. And obviously, she didn't come to us because we're conveniently closed. She didn't come to us because, you know, we are a BMW dealership either. She came to us because we charge a lot less than what she would pay at the BMW dealership. If you want original BMW parts and original BMW mechanics working on your car, you would take your car to a BMW dealership. Which right, but I could take my car to a mechanic and say, I want, uh, you know, I'll pay for the for the BMW part. Like, I mean, in other words, if I, I could take my car to my regular mechanic and say, put in an original BMW part, they just order it, that's all. And it probably raises Absolutely. the price. So did she say to you, I want a BMW part? She said she wanted her car repaired, and she said she wanted a BMW part. And that's when we contact the mechanic, and the mechanic came in. He ordered all the parts. He gave her a receipt at the time of the repairs. So I don't know why she says that wasn't given to Okay, but I, I don't understand. Similar. She brought it to you to repair. Who are you referring to when you say the mechanic? It's a guy so on your site, right? Don't, no, we don't have a mechanic for public people. We fix our own vehicles, which was perfectly lawful for us to do. Uh, we, you know, we get cars, sometimes they need maintenance, and we have our own mechanic that does work Right, but this isn't your car. No. This is her car. And for that, you do Correct. need a license. So why were Correct. you fixing her car if you're not so licensed to I, do that? I did not fix her car. I hired a, a mobile mechanic, which comes in on site, and he is licensed, and he did the work for her car, and he actually performed the work. So you're receipt, being sued by her it. on this case. Do you have the actual paperwork that that licensed mechanic gave her? Did you call no, your guy and not. say, give we, me a copy of it? We tried to call him when the Bureau of Automatic Repair came in because she did uh, file a formal complaint with the bar. And they came in and they asked all that information. We tried to contact that mechanic. Unfortunately, that mechanic's phone number is no longer in service. So we did try that. And her original complaint was a receipt. She was never talking about monetary or anything like that. We found that out. Well, she wanted the receipt case. because once she took the car to her own mechanic, her own mechanic said... This is not a BMW part. That was never told to us. What? It was her complaint when she needed a receipt. No, according to the new place, that, that is an aftermarket part, not a BMW part. So she, now, and, and her concern is she has no paperwork with this other entity. The only paperwork she has is with you because she has your credit. You took her credit card as payment. What's that about? Well, she wanted to pay the mechanic with her credit card. And we know that mechanic, mobile mechanics don't accept credit cards. She also wanted her points on her American Express to build up. So she asked us to use her card, which we charged, and we paid cash to the mechanic. Okay. Do you, have it. you ever been given the name of this mechanic? And were you told that you were taking your car to a separate entity that wasn't them, Ms. Guess? Never, Your Honor. I would not have done that. I mean, if there was a, if I were going to employ a mobile mechanic, you'd I have him come to your house. Driven the fo- <laughs> exactly because that's the whole purpose. The okay, so so in your mind, mechanic. he's fixing it at his place where he fixes stuff, and you don't know who he hired to fix it. It doesn't make a difference to you, and you paid him. That's why you filed the complaint exactly. with the with the um, right. And what happened with the complaint with the what is it called? The The Bureau Bureau of Automotive Automotive Repair, Repair, which is the regulatory agency in California. And what happened with them, Mr. Ramirez? What happened with them? So he came in. We explained what happened in the situation. And he tried to explain to Ms. Robin that um, seals and gaskets do not have a one-year warranty. Um, And they especially won't warranty it if BMW themselves did not install it. 
So he tried to explain to her that the receipt's not going to do her any good. They're still not going to give her any warranty. Was he your cousin or something? No, no, no. Because his not. job was to investigate you for taking money for a repair when you don't have a license to take money for a repair. That was the only job that guy had. And why didn't he cite you? Okay, so his remarks on the bar report clearly states Ramirez was not able to locate the mobile mechanic to obtain a copy of the receipt for the repairs and did not offer a resolution to the complaint because he did not profit from the repairs. That was his investigation. That was his. How would he know? That just means you told him you didn't profit. That means he no, bought. No, he that means he bought this. Oh, I just used my credit card so she could get points. You know who doesn't buy it? Me. I don't buy it. You were getting paid to do a repair that you don't have a license to do a repair. But worse, you admitted to me in the middle of this trial that she had asked for a BMW part, and now I have the evidence from her mechanic, who charged her eighteen hundred dollars to have the job done, saying that. This particular valve was not BMW genuine. It is FEBI brand. So it was an aftermarket part. So you've already told me, I may have taken the money from her, but I just gave it to another guy who's three, you know, he's gone. He's some alley mechanic no one can find. So I have no responsibility in this. Seriously? No, we never, we asked her to bring the car in so we can rectify the problem. She Except never what happened that. with that, Ms. Uh, Guess? You bring the car I in. I in to have them rectify the problem. They said the valve cover wasn't the problem. They said it was the oil cap. And uh, so they wanted to just change out the oil cap. But that just wasn't credible to me. So that's why I pursued Did uh, they my change complaint. the oil cap? They did change the oil cap. And then did the smoking stop? No, it did not. And then you drove it off smoking? I drove it off. Well, it takes it a while. The engine has to get warm for the smoking to start. But by the time I went from there to Santa Monica, yes, I still had smoking. So, Mr. Ramirez, it's basically you're saying wasn't me. Even though we're watching you with our eyes, you're the only guy here. Um, you're the one she went to for the repair. You're the one who has a credit card slip. I don't know who works for the Bureau of Automotive Repairs and what they're thinking. Um, but according to you, he told you it's a good thing you didn't give her a receipt or I'd have to cite you. What was <laughs> what kind of a statement is that? What was that about? Because if if that's what he said, he knows that you did charge her because there's the credit card receipt. So it's just like bizarre. But in any event, the, according to you, Ms. Guest, they did cite him. What did they cite him? Yes, with? Attachment C, where you see the Bureau of Automotive Repair Station Inspection Report. I advise Ramirez that it is unlawful to hold themselves out to the motoring public as an automotive repair dealer. Did they make you pay a fine, Mr. Ramirez? There was no fine paid. Okay. And that comment where you said he advised me not to uh, give her a receipt was not due to that. It was because her original complaint was that she wanted a receipt. And she was, give me a receipt or I'll go to the bar and complain about you. Yeah. So we were actually this close to giving her a receipt just to get her off our back. And that's when we explained that to the bar investigator. And he says, well, had you done that, then I would have to cite you because that shows proof you're actually doing it for profit. Which um, is, by the I, way, know, I want you to work with me a second and think about what you just said, what the guy said to you. I don't doubt the guy said to you. Do you realize how asinine that is? Because he tells you that because you fell short of giving her what somebody should have given her before, you're going to skate. Like, <laughs> it's just, you know what? We've gone over this too many times. So the bottom line is she pays you $1,043. You, not Coyasso, not Cheo from the hallway. You, uh -huh, $1,043. And you tell people I didn't profit, even though the only evidence of who profited was you, because you have provided zero to show that that money went anywhere other than your pocket. And OK, I got to decide the thing breaks again. Yeah, it's six months later. But you told me at this trial, yeah, she asked for a BMW part. Well, guess what? I have proof it's not a BMW part from her mechanic. And we know it broke again. And we know that putting in no a non-BMW part has not lasted because that had already happened the last time. I'm ordering you to return her money, $1,043, verdict for the plaintiff. Can I ask you a question, Your Honor? 
So the plaintiff prevails. She is going to get her money back. Mr. Ramirez, uh, did you learn anything from this experience? I mean, that plaintiff obviously is someone not to be fooled around with, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and people like that, you know, it's the cost of doing business. Unfortunately, you try to help people. She came to us because we were a lot cheaper than her mechanic was. And um, unfortunately, it backfired on us because we try to help a customer and we end up in this situation. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk to uh, the plaintiff now. Ms. Guests, uh, you went to a lot of work uh, to prepare for this lawsuit. You were uh, satisfied yes, with I the, the verdict? I'm sure you are. I am. I'm very, very satisfied. I think that the judge was very, very fair, and she examined all the documents. I went through a lot of work to provide her with very clear and convincing evidence. You know, one logical question, if you were wanted, you were so sure you wanted BMW parts, why didn't you take your car to BMW? Have them do the repair. Well, I do have a BMW dealership here in Santa Monica, but they'll charge three times as much in labor for the same work. And I just, I'm not in a position to just give money away like that. Okay, I hope you're satisfied with the outcome of the case and you will get your money back. So congratulations. Well, Doug, the plaintiff was smart by getting an expert to make it clear that these were not authentic BMW parts. And that's why the plaintiff won. By the way, in the event that putting bad parts in a car causes even more damage than the cost of the job itself, the defendant would be on the hook for that all of the damages that emanate from doing the job poorly. If I have an emotional support animal named Peanut, can I take her into restaurants and stores and can airlines deny her from sitting in my seat with me? The situation for flying with emotional support animals changed last January. In January 2021, the Department of Transportation changed their regulations so that Airlines now don't have to accept an emotional support animal the way they would a service animal. Uh, the service animals get on board uh, without having to pay extra uh, when they ride inside of the cabin of right. the of It used the to be that if it was an emotional support animal, your pet flew free. And as usual, yeah. humans who are greedy... Um, just took a good thing overreached. and just overreached and the pendulum swung because other humans right. got, you know, I mean, I one of my daughter's best friends growing up had a, an allergy to dogs. Right. She would have to get off the plane. Right. Um, right. And, you know, and then and then you're 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 sitting there at a restaurant and someone's dog's behind is on the seat next to you over right. there. You know, so so people have abused what was something that made sense all of a sudden was so abused that now there's they've curtailed it. Right. You know, uh, our daughter, Christina, took her cat uh, on an airplane about three or four months ago, bringing it home to our house. Right. And it got loose. Should we, I paid, by the way, I paid the hundred bucks. And you did. the you animal, paid the money. Good. but the animal it got, got loose. Yeah. And she's looking at a tiny and little, cat. she had left a little bit open and the animal right. got, and, and the cat right. was a kitten at the right. time. And it ended up like a, up by the cockpit. Yeah. Trying to get in the door. <laughs> it's storming the cockpit. She's running down she the hall. Tiny. People are filming right. her on her hands and knees trying to get the, you know, stuff happens. <laughs>